सो वी हैव डॉक्टर अजीत कुलकर्णी सर हिअर आज टेक अ मोमेंट टू फ्लैश अबाउट हिम ऑन द स्क्रीन या thank you sir for joining us today it is a pleasure that out of your tight schedule that you have made time for us and uh, what to tell you i mean uh, dr ajit kulkarni is one of the leading homeopathic physicians of india with over 33 years of practice he is a veteran homeopath and academician and a famed international teacher who is known for his contribution to homeopathy uh, he is famous for his innovative and novel ideas especially uh integrating body language with interpretation and how to apply it in homeopathy he is well known for that uh he is also a professor for various post graduate courses in homeopathic centers in india and he is also a director of homeopathic research institute in satara and pune this is just a brief introduction we are looking forward to your session sir and we we'll, we are looking forward to your main session that is on ammoniums and acetates and uh, i think all of us are eagerly waiting for that session over to you sir without wasting any more time yeah so will you yeah yeah so uh i am with you and uh, this small uh, introduction to you about uh, acetate group about ammonium group i think we have been using ammonium carbonicum ammonium muriaticum from ammonium group many people don't use aceticum it is very interesting that uh, we are using barata carb but no barata aceticum we are using cuprum arsenicosum cuprum mate but not cuprum aceticum so we have this very important group of aceticums almost you will find aceticum as an ion is attached to many cations so this study is basically study because of a very interesting case of barata aceticum which i treated when barata carbonicum fell so this was the beginning of the study of the aceticum and the more i started going deep into the symptom etiology as coming from the proving and then a lot of logistics which are involved a lot of correlation between cation and anion i was able to present to the profession the structuralization the conceptual image of the acetate group which i first presented also in my body language book and then i also expanded it and now i will be in a position to offer you what exactly this group has to say to you in terms of symptoms in terms of clinical application in terms of pathophysiology in terms of doctrine of signature and while presenting acetate group to the profession i was also able to understand the relationship between cation and anion positively charged negatively charged taking some you uh, see charge from any other cation negative energy positive energy and i was really interested in understanding now through this chemical understanding how i can relate this with the matter america how we can see that yes this is positively charged so what do you mean by positively charged how will you explain this in terms of will drive and motivation how you will understand the pattern of the energy with a person where you are thinking of positively charged where you are thinking of negatively charged where you use a word in order to be positively charged it has to take some uh, inputs from the other sources so this is just a sentence in the chemistry how will you understand this sentence so this study has been presented from this standpoint 
and there is a wide scope to study in this way all the periodic table. So when we study this relationship of cations and anions, it is possible to understand a variety of symptomatology coming from the proving and then the personality study which we structuralize for the sake of giving a living, throbbing, vibrant human being status to a remedy. So I will be presenting to you through the asceticum with illustrative cases this concept. And I think there is a big scope to understand many metals, many lanthanides, many neglected remedies in the Mutter America. Just open the chemistry book, try to understand the structure and try to see whether it is really applicable. So we will deal with this issue. I will not explain to you this theme today because I want you to be eager to listen to my contribution. So this is one thing now about aceticum. About ammoniacums, this is a group which is, uh, you know, neglected because we have only two drugs being thoroughly proved, ammonium mool and ammonium carbonicum. There are more than 25 ammonia comes in our material. When I went into the general understanding, chemistry, role of uh, ammonia in our body, in nature, in nitrogen cycle, the use of fertilizers, the use of ammonia in our uh, clothes, in our garments, in uh, cleansing items as ingredients. I found that we are using ammoniums very much within a span of 50 years. Our lifestyle has changed so much today that we are with a lot of chemicals day in and day out. Many of them are toxic. Many of them are slow poisoners. We don't know what are they doing to us. So the study of ammonium has a linkage to nitrogen cycle, which is disturbed with modern civilized growing industrialization and the use of ammonia. My attention to ammonium grew up when I read a message in the Times of India that it is very easy to prepare ammonium nitrate in order to make bombs and to explode. So I was just trying to understand nitricum, ammonium, bomb, explosion, death, destruction. So I just went into understanding ammonium nitricum. So this cation, this anion, the basic ion of ammonium, and I started exploding. This exploration gave me a lot of new concepts to understand ammoniums. You know, we have the carbon cycle in our body. We have the nitrogen cycle in our body. Many of our metabolic activities are dependent upon these cycles. When they are disturbed, we have huge pathologies. Maybe you know the remedy nitrogen, again, very well proved. And the theme that came out with nitrogen is suffocation. So I was just trying to understand whether suffocation could be a theme of ammoniums. And I found yes it must be a central issue of ammoniums. So suffocation, one who would like to suffocate others, like our Ophidia group, those who become suffocated because they are vulnerable. So someone is suffocating, someone is getting suffocated. So can I now understand this theme by the one who is aggressor, and by the one who is a receiver, 
who is getting the you see ill effects of being suffocated by a person so the theme of constriction the theme of restriction theme of separation started coming up then i had a very interesting case of head injury where he started you see passing the csf through the nose he was operated upon for this but the recurrence came so they sought the help of a homeopath i was consulted and i found that he is a very good patient of ammonium muriaticum and i was trying to study who has used ammonium remedies in head injury and i found that there is a american homeopath who wrote over ammonium remedies in head injuries so i opened the repertory repertory doesn't contain any ammonium for head injury so we are very sufficient to use arnica montana and belispor and simphytum and hypericum but we don't think of ammonia no? there are various types of head injuries head injuries are mainly of hypoxic type also hypoxic anoxic type also there is a suspension of the oxygen temporarily there is a permanent death of the brain tissue because of stoppage of oxygen can we use in hypoxic anoxic brain injuries ammonium remedies not only this case responded to ammonium more but my one more case responded very well to ammonium carbonicum so my interest in ammonium started increasing i was using this remedy for children's obstruction of the nose but i had a very interesting case of a boy the step mother because the biological mother died during delivery and this boy was being nurtured unfortunately badly by the step mother she used to be very harsh and rude with the child and the child used to have involuntary urination nocturnal enuresis and obstruction of the nose so i could found out these two psychosomatic reflections there is nothing wrong with the nose the wrong is with the mind and interestingly the remedy that came out was ammonium carbonicum and with ammonium carbonicum these two symptoms disappear so my interest because of this case started increasing so i have been using this uh, ammonium group and acetate group since a long time maybe more than almost 15 years with a lot of data with a lot of pathologies with a lot of cases so i would like to share with you all these cases and the interesting group of, of these two ammonium at one side and aceticums at the other side so this is in short in order to ignite the enthusiasm within you to understand these two groups now i am open to you about questions these questions could be on other subjects not on ammonium and not on aceticum yeah so you can freely talk with me you can ask me your questions yeah doctor thank you very much can we ask the questions now yes um i would just like to know i'm thinking this is such a useful um tool or such a useful potential uh group of remedies uh during the covid uh problems with breathing i'm wondering if you've seen anything uh apply you know the idea of not being able to breathe yeah you see unable to breathe could be pathophysiological it may be clinically oriented in understanding the pathology responsible for this or it could be just a reflection of the mind in a way i showed you obstruction of the nose in a child 
I have been using ammonium carb, but other I will say I use ammonium carb not less than 100 cases in Corona when I found the respiratory failure with cyanosis, with cytokine storm, the patient is collapsed, the patient has coldness of the extremities and patient cannot breathe because of extensive pneumonia and the cytokine storm. And I found that uh, early use of ammonium carb, when I found the neutrophil and lymphocyte ratio is disproportionate, you know, if it is crossing, you see 3.4, the patient is likely to land into complications. When the ratio is such that, for example, neutrophil is uh, 80, and lymphocyte is just 5. So you can see how much the ratio has disturbed. Less the lymphocytes, more the neutrophils. Patient is likely to land into trouble. Likely to suffer from cytokine storm. Early use of ammonium carb in high potency, every 3 hours, 4 hours, held to such an extent that cytokine storm was no more available. It didn't occur. And even if it occurred, it was very mild. Not even a single case of mine by, you see, correlating the symptomatology and the pathology with the investigatory parameters. I was able to foresee what is going to happen to the immunological system and how now the autoimmune process in terms of the relentless progression of the pathology will cause permanent damage to the tissues, vital tissues. So ammonium group has a lot of things to do in a, you see, preventive manner as well as in a treatment manner. So you could use them in functional cases. You could use them also in structural cases, like all other polycrest remedies in our Mater America. So your question is a very good question that it opens up such a wild field of the use of the ammonia comes. Yeah. Thank you I very have much. a similar question. Can I ask you? Yes. About the pathology uh, long-term pathology uh, of uh, asthma and development probably into sarcoidosis. Yeah. How would that um, relate to any of the groups you are referring to? Thank you. Okay. Sarcoidosis is altogether a different disease. It's an autoimmune disorder. Asthma is not an autoimmune disorder. It has infective, allergic, and genetic component causative much more. However, when we deal with complications of the asthma, mainly they are emphysema, emphysematous bronchitis. Then this emphysema leads to carpalmonel, then left-sided heart failure, then the failure of the heart. So this is the way in which you are able to see the asthma going for further changes from the psychotic miasm to tubercular miasm and may land into the syphilitic miasm. With super added infections of recurrent bronchitis in a case of asthma, patient can come down with uh, a lot of, uh, you see, fibrose lesions in the lungs, which will deprive the patient of the natural lung disease. So there is a permanent loss of the alveolar tissue. This leads to breathlessness. One of the best rubrics for this is slight exertion causes breathlessness. There are two rubrics in connection with this. First, respiration difficult. Second, respiration asthmatic. If it is really a clinically puru case of asthma with asthmatic wheezing, then it is better to take a rubric, respiration asthmatic. However, the way in which this, this 
two rubrics have been constructed by Bonningerson, by Kent, and by many other authors. The problem is that there are some remedies which are more in quantity in respiration difficult with the same set of modalities. Whereas in say other modalities, you will find respiration asthma, asthmatic contains more remedies. So as a homeopath, I will prefer to go for a wide field of the study of the remedies. So I can use both rubrics, asthmatic as well as the respiration difficult. Because in the respiration difficult also, respiration asthmatic is also covered and vice versa also. Then slight exertion aggravation is a very classical symptom of emphysema. Patient cannot walk even you see 10 steps. And then the more the walking, more is the progressive you see breathlessness and patient has to sit down. He cannot walk. This is a very classical symptom of emphysema, which also shows the loss of the function of the biological rhythm of expiration and inspiration. So in such a case, you have to go for the set of the remedies. Ammonium group, especially ammonium arsenicosum and ammonium carbonicum are found extremely useful. One of the best remedies from, you see, uh, mineral kingdom for dealing with the impassimatous changes of fibrosis is stannum metallicum. In stannum metallicum, you get a very steady, slow process of the development. The tin as a metal causes the poisoning in the human beings in a slow way. Just like in arsenic, you will find uh, two types of arsenic uh, uh, toxicology. The more the heavy dose, it will be acute poisoning effects. Then if you go on giving very small quantity of arsenic, it will be slow poisoning over years. So the theme with stannum metallicum is gradual development of the pathologies. So this gradual deepening pathology is very characteristic of many heavy metals. Take for example, a potassium salts in our metal America. You will find out of them, you see Kali, Bichrome, Kali, Carbonicum, Causticum especially, they have slow progression of the pathologies. If you go still further in understanding the lead pathology, lead encephalopathy, you know, the mind becomes, uh, uh, you see, dull, imbecility develops, patient starts having a lot of delusions, and then slow lead enters in the brain, and the brain progressively slowly becomes dull, where comprehension becomes very difficult. Why I am trying to give you this idea? Because there are few remedies which have got a slow onset. This is I call as a pattern. This individual pattern of the remedies is more individualistic in nature. I have written an extensive chapter in body language over patterns of the body language. This article could be taken, this chapter could be taken to describe patterns of maternal America and the repertories. And you can link them also with the individual so that you understand the propensities, you understand the behavioral responses. So repeated patterns of the same time, same type give you the individualistic uh, you see uh, a kind of a manifestation and the correlation of them with maternal America and the repertory gives you the remedy. This is the idea. So stanamet is a very good idea to deal with. Then there is a very interesting remedy that is uh, you will find silicia. You know, silicia is also a slow acting deeper remedy. You know, silicosis toxicology is like you see tuberculous small lesions which get created in the lungs and then patient develops this pulmonary silicosis which is like pulmonary tuberculosis. It is not a very rapid development. When a person is exposed to silica dust, he develops silicosis after a long time, maybe after years. In a similar way in silica, you get pathologies which are after months and years of duration. 
as if the pathological deviant disease energy gets concentrated on the tissue level and then it goes deeper and deeper. So this classical example of silica you can apply to emphysematous changes in the uh, UC lungs. The only problem is that with silica you have to be repeat very carefully. You cannot repeat silica in a way you can repeat other remedies because silica can open up the parrot's focus. Means if a case of asthma had tuberculosis in the past and you just to go on giving silica daily, it is not a good idea. You have to be extremely vigilant whether you will repeat or not. So this is all about silica. I repeated a case of COPD long back at uh, one of the seminars international and the case improved beyond expectation. I put him on uh, silica for a very long time. I began with a uh, silica uh, LM4 and went ahead and ahead up to almost LM15. And he's, the more he started taking silica, more the capacity of the lungs to breathe improve a lot. He was a uh, UC man of around 72 years of age. And I have explained this case with all the reports and everything. So there are a host of remedies if you take into account uh, uh, the emphysema with core pulmonal and the UC heart failure. Now in ammonium carb, you get a respiratory failure and also the heart failure. One of the other groups of the remedies you can think of in the emphysema in connection with this question is the carbon group. When you give a carbon remedy, it is just like you give oxygen to your patient on the basis of the law of stimulus. Because in many of these cases of emphysema, you must observe that the whole carbon and the oxygen use cycle is disturbed. And it is here you will find nitrogen also comes up very strongly. Carbovegetabilis is a very important remedy in emphysema. It improves the oxygen supply to the alveolar tissues. Carbons are also indicated for fibrosis. If you take into account mainly carboanimalis, which is prepared from the flesh of the uh, uh, oxen, which is very rich in flex, flesh. So this carboanimalis is a I think at one level it is an animal remedy. At other level, it becomes a mineral remedy. So this combination of carboanimalis is very important. Carboanimalis has fibrosis. This is the remedy which is therefore indicated for fibroadenoma of the breast in women. It is also a remedy for very hard, stony hard tumors, including the oncology cases. So the theme is that of fibrosis. And the theme in UC post UC chronic sequelae of asthma is nothing but fibrosis. So carboanimalis, carbovegetabilis, carbonium sulfuratum, these are the remedies which you must think of also in cases of emphysema. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Hello, sir. Good afternoon to you, sir. Yeah. Dr. Aarti here. It's great to have you on this platform of using, sir, to hear from you. Uh, sir, I had a question. Uh, since you spoke about the ammoniums, like ammonia, ammon carbon, um, uh, barita, acidicum, as you had the case. Now, when these minerals or when these salts we talk about, for example, if we take a calcarea carb, now calcarea carb is a very proven remedy, so it's fine. But some drugs like calcarea salt or cal 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 calcarea mule or some drugs, so is it fine that we take the symptoms of the patients as calcarea carb, we match it? Or do we take as calcarea and carb and then we match it and give the patient the medicine? How do we go about it? Very nice question. Now, see, our material medical study has basically two infrastructure angles. First, proving of the symptoms. This proving is adequate enough as far as more than 1,000 remedies are concerned. 
about many other remedies, they are not thoroughly proved. They require thorough proving, no doubt about that. But logically, clinically, on the basis of the confirmation of the symptoms all over the world, which the homeopaths will share through cases, then you will find that it is possible that in the absence of the proving symptoms, it is possible to develop the structure of the remedy. It is possible to develop the conceptual image of a remedy. And this is, I think, one of the great contributions through the logistics. Because this is not only an imaginative logistics. It has a reasoning, it has a clinical experience. It has much more deeper than that the general indications of the group study of the Materia Medica, which we are able to derive. Take for example, defective oxidation and combustion is the central theme of the carbon remedies. This comes from physiology. This comes from pathology. Therefore, it is definitively related to the clinical side. So based on this basic understanding of defective combustion, defective oxidation, what is happening to the whole body as such, to the metabolic processes in the body, to the physiological mechanisms that are occurring. And then this altered physiology manifesting as different variable pathologies. You will always find that it is possible that the general indications could be related to the individual remedies to make them more strong, to make them more applicable, to make them more reasoningly gifted medicinal action, which we didn't understand earlier. So this particular concept of going from the general indications to the particular remedy is possible. Although I personally give more importance to the individual remedy. Personally, I have an opinion that only conceptual understanding and the application of it over patient is not a good idea. You must have a correlation in one way or the other, maybe adequate or maybe inadequate, but with the proving symptoms. This is my personal condition in homeopathy. Otherwise, one day someone will come and will say, no provings are needed in homeopathy. And I think this is a great danger signal to homeopathy. The very basic structure of homeopathy, of healthy human being proving this great contribution of Hanuman should not be at stake. This is my very personal opinion and appeal to all the homeopaths in the world. Don't say this, we don't need the proving. You need concepts, you need imaginations, you need correlations. It's okay. But they cannot be above the proving. Rather, the very base is proving, and then all these concepts together to the proving data. Then it becomes experiential. When you give any remedy to a prover, to a healthy volunteer, it gives you the experience of the human beings the reason gifted intelligence and the off repeated symptomatology gives you the pathogenetic action being experienced and narrated by several provers in the world. So this basis of homeopathy should not be affected. So your question is really a very deep question and it opens up so much you see of homeopathic dimensions that the answer becomes a very wild one. I'm just giving you some shortcuts how to enter into different fields with this very good question. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So are you still open to taking questions? I think we have overshooted the time that uh, we had asked you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so just one or two questions more and then we'll close the uh, question answers. Uh, so there's a question since we were doing Boide group right before you joined, Dr. Sriti Shah and Project Avaidya were doing Boide group. So we have a question related to Ophidia group and the suffocation that you mentioned about ammonia. So is it very important that we 
identify and arrive at a kingdom of a patient and hence the remedy is more important for us to decide among whether it is ammonium group like the mineral group or the opidia group so yeah see this is a question related to the entry point you can have as a homeopath entry point through several routes every route will go to rome in the same way you can go to the remedy through the kingdom you can go to the remedy through a small proving symptom also it's like a you see you are connecting mind who is able to perceive it and then you connect it in such a way that the destination is clear to you so you can use kingdom you can use proving you can use the concept you can use the general indications because as a homeopath you are open so first question is are you open mentally to understand the process and to catch the entry point yes this is the route this is the destination i have to go and i have found the way now this is my way so in each case this way is different and this is there for a very interesting journey for a homeopath he can use many concepts you see and just see which is applicable not, not every concept is applicable at all times so this is a kind of a you see uh, a perceiving state of the mind of a physician who is receptive and enough to embrace the situation and to see the whole picture in totality then it is possible so you can enter in uh, uh, the case through kingdom understanding through general uh, but you see if you are asking me a question about uh, kingdom understanding as a general that this patient belongs to mineral this patient belongs to animal or imponderable or to the vegetable i think we have to understand also that life is always a blend you are born with all the kingdoms together so one kingdom can be dominant preponderant over a system at a time but it doesn't mean that all other kingdoms will be kept buried by the system so today's patient may require ammonium and later on he may go to ammonium muriate come because he is very irritable because he is rancorous because he is very very jealous and wants to beat the other people this is also possible so possibilities probabilities ramifications they are so much open in the evolutionary journey of a human being with the fall of with the journey of the life itself that it is very difficult to strictly you see follow the compartmentalization of the uh, kingdom so i think that kingdom concept is also with a lot of entry points lot of logistics at the same time one should not be rigid about it that i think this is a vegetable kingdom and therefore i will go on giving only vegetable kingdom you know no one is born solo or mono there is nothing like isolated with any person life is always always until death maybe after death the blend thank you so much sir uh, just the last question we'll take uh, from the chat box how much of emphasis is to be given to postural modalities and difficulty in breathing okay now you see this is a process of evaluation the question is related to how much value you give to the postural modalities i think time modalities carry more importance than postural modalities all modalities are defense mechanisms sometimes they are successful giving you relief sometimes they give you the aggravation as we see being defense mechanisms they reflect the inner individuality of a case consistent postural modalities are important in asthma every time bending forward gives the relief 
this has been observed by the parents in a child over years then this becomes a consistent modality once or twice you have observed the postural modality doesn't make a pattern pattern means a repeated behavior of the same order so consistency has much to do with the postural modality in the evaluation now in the absence of the time modality postural modalities will carry more importance you should take them as more for the sake of evaluation and maybe they carry the eliminating rubric position if you get now time modality plus postural modality both characteristics both consistent it is very good then give importance to both to together for such a case what i do in the repertorialization i take all the rubrics especially in an output without applying any of my thinking process either of the brain right side or brain right, left side just to record every symptom and make a repertorialization then my you see creativity and evaluation begins i have found this way of dealing with such cases very useful yeah take all the quantity of rubrics maybe 20 rubrics maybe 25 rubrics i i, I have no problem then i will well, enter sorry. at the wild field then i will make whether this is characteristic whether this is not characteristic after i have thoroughly understood everything sometimes you see you can go from adequate quantity to adequate quality and this is in line with the uh, you see uh, logic thank you so much sir uh, so has spent a lot of time with us uh, he had just asked for half an hour but just for the sake of participants he's still here answering all the questions thank you so much sir you have a treasure of wisdom and we all look forward to your session uh, sir session will start from 17th of september and uh, i think this was just the trailer in hindi we say ye to bas trailer tha picture abhi baki hai that means the trailer this was just the trailer the movie is yet to happen so register for the session and uh, so he is with us you can ask the questions during the sessions when we start with ammoniums and acetates thank you so much sir for being yes here. yes so before i let you go dr rajit i just wanted yeah. to say that uh, today's was i mean of course uh, we all look forward to the upcoming session there's so much to learn from you but today's session was also so beautiful in its own ways and i really loved some of the things that you said you know that are you as a homeopath open that is the first question there are so many routes so many methods and with that also in mind no we have teachers from different backgrounds coming on musings and uh, you have such you know i mean you're so clinical so thorough you need everything so research oriented your research hat is always on Uh, and i think that's so critical to do good homeopathy to do good to our patients so there's so much to learn and uh, really looking forward to your session sir and i think the amalgamation of all uh, all methods to do what the patient needs do what the case needs which entry point this case needs i think that flexibility as a homeopath we need to learn from you and uh, uh, perfect i think this is uh, this has been amazing yeah and i think with this ammonium and acetate we are going to learn something uh, a group of remedies you know which are available and we are not using uh, very frequently in the practice so we are going to get good amount of knowledge and then apply it to our practice and the cases so that's going to be a very important part of this uh, webinar which is going to happen. thank you so much sir yeah, yes and, enjoy all best wishes